to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine and today we are going to talk about the differences between English and Spanish. I'm going to show you a presentation I make for my students on the very first classes we have together because I think it's very important that we understand the differences between the two languages that it's not just a set of grammatical rules and different vocabulary, and that's it. No. Learning a new language is learning a different way of looking at the world, a different point of view, a different way of expressing, a different way of thinking, of communicating. Communicating. So that's why I think this is important. This slide pretty much summarizes it. Here, we can see how English speakers express themselves. They are much more direct that, than we are as Spanish speakers. As Spanish speakers, we tend to decorate what we say a little bit too much. So we go off topic and then come back. We don't go straight to the point, but we should. Then there are some differences in grammar. These differences benefit us as English speakers because the grammar in English it is much easier. For example, for example, talking about conjugation. In Spanish, we must conjugate every tense depending on the person we are talking about. And in English, this happens like very less. This does not happen. It happens, we just have to learn two or three tops, different words to express something. And besides there are fewer tenses, it is much easier. So do not be afraid of grammar. This happens with adjectives too and with nouns. You know, in Spanish, we have to find the gender, the right gender and the right number. If it's singular or plural, we have to put a different article and we have to change the adjective if it's male or female, etc. And this doesn't happen in English. The only case in which we talk about male or female is when we talk about men or women. In any other cases, we don't. And in adjectives, we never care about that. And we never care about the noun being singular or plural either. It's just easier. So again, don't be afraid of grammar. The part that can actually be more challenging is in pronunciation and spelling. For example, here you have the way I spell Thank you. Because I heard it like one word and because I heard an S because it was the sound that, you know, was similar to a sound I knew because the TH sound in English doesn't exist in Spanish. But if I had known it, the story would have been different. So now you know. English and Spanish share some sounds, vowel sounds, but there are many, many vowel sounds that we do not have in Spanish. So when we hear and when we write, we write what is closest to us, to an IEO. But if we know that there are other sounds, we will start identifying those sounds when we hear them. And then we'll be able to pronounce them too. For example, I'm in that process. I'm learning how to pronounce them. Like in these three words, an English speaker will pronounce these three words differently. An English speaker will be able to differentiate those words, but many times also help by context. For example, I'll say Mary, Mary, Mary. Marry me? Merry Christmas? My friend Mary. And maybe I don't pronounce them well because I'm still learning, but an English speaker would pronounce them. Perfectly and differently, probably. 
This also happens with the consonants. We do share consonants too. There are some consonants that they have in English that we don't have in Spanish, and there are some consonants that we have in Spanish that they don't have in English. So if we are aware that the R doesn't exist in English, then we'll stop pronouncing red because that sound doesn't exist in English. I will wonder then what do they use? I will start paying attention to that and then identifying and then pronouncing. For example, these two. In Spanish, we usually pronounce them the same, but in English, you do have to pronounce them differently, the V and the B, because if not, you can be saying the wrong word. And what happens with spelling? In some cases, we share the spelling and the pronunciation, like in this word man, but what happens with the next? We need to know that certain combinations have some sounds and can have more than one sound. For example, here, the O and the U will sound O and the G and the H will sound F. And so I'll pronounce cough. And in the following word, even though I also have O, U, I'll pronounce that U, and even though I have G and H, I won't pronounce that at all. So I'll say through because the G and the H are going to be silent. There are so many silent letters in English and we don't have as many in Spanish. But if we know, like for example, we know that many times the L is silent in English, we will be able to pronounce or to pay attention to a word like walk in which the L is silent. But if you never know, then you'll never know. A very important difference is the syllables and the rhythm. The syllabication and the rhythm in English and Spanish are different. And I think that is why we don't sound natural in English, because we are pronouncing like if we were reading syllables in Spanish. In Spanish, we have a weak accent and a strong accent. And that's it. In English, we have the strong accent, the secondary accent, the tertiary accent, the weak accent, the weakest accent. So, there are more degrees and that makes the language more rhythmic. There are different kinds of stress and that makes the language more rhythmic. Besides, intonation is much more important. So, for example, I want to read this in English. I'd say, where do you think it will be found? But if I read it, like if I'm reading Spanish, I would probably read, where do you think it will be found? I might be pronouncing correctly, but I'm not using the correct stress or intonation. So once we know about this and we pay attention, we start noticing and then we start saying. So when you have to repeat something, not only should you repeat the pronunciation, but also the intonation. This difference is very interesting because in English, when you have one word and you don't know the meaning, you really, really need the context to know what the word means. Because if you go to the dictionary, you will have 10 different meanings and they will all depend on the context. This is why translating word by word is not good. And that's why I don't like translating at all. I like associating. But the context in English is very important. And this doesn't happen in Spanish. In Spanish, we have one word and we can say the same thing with 10 different synonyms. And we can use 10 different words to say the same and there will be no difference. But in English, if we use different words, it's very probable that there is going to be a slight difference. And that happens in English. So that's why you have to be careful when choosing words in English. There are many other differences, but I think these are the most important ones for you to know, to pay attention to, to see that you are speaking a whole different language that you're expressing in a different way. If you pay attention to these details, then you'll be learning more efficiently, you'll be learning fast, you're, you'll be learning more consciously, and you'll have a lot more fun. Thank you for watching, comment, subscribe, share, and I hope to see you soon.